Welcome back. I've got a great learning opportunity for you today, so stick around and let's see how this day goes. By the way, this is just us pulling the airplane out. This is the first time I've seen sunlight since December. It's been an extended annual for no other reason except we've just been busy. I should hold her for now. Yeah, sweet. Okay, sanity check for oil. She's got oil. Props clear, no engine plug. Yeah, the nose tire probably needs a little uh, ear, but we can do that. That looks fine. Here looks good. I'm gonna run off the right tank since we had that one disconnected. Um, and we've done so many gear swings, I'm hoping the battery's not flat, but uh, we should be okay. Clear. What you're looking at here is the first run after annual and I really wanted to get in, warm the engine up and then check for leaks. But before we get there, I thought it would be really great to give you a quick tour around the Lycoming IO360 that powers this airplane. Okay, you've seen this before but if you're new here then let's talk about it. Lycoming IO360 C1C, so this is 200 horsepower. It's not greater than 200 horsepower. It's not 200.1. It's exactly 200 horsepower. So the FAA won't you let you use this as a high power airplane. So you can't get your high power endorsement in this airplane, which is fine. We got all the airplanes for that. Uh, this is fuel injected, which is the I in IO360. So injected, you'll see some fuel injection lines here, which lead to a fuel injection nozzle which is down here so when someone says they've got gammy injectors or something like that what you do is switch out these nozzles you unscrew those put some new nozzles in and you've got calibrated nozzles from a company called gammy this does not have gammy injectors we're not that fancy we don't have that kind of money right now there's a distribution spider right here so fuel is being distributed to all of the different cylinders via this little unit right here this is coming from the fuel pump so the uh, engine driven fuel pump is pumping fuel into here and this is distributing it into the cylinders. If your fuel pump fails on the engine, you've got an electronic fuel pump, an electric fuel pump that backs it up. It will also put fuel right into there. Four cylinders and um, the numbering on this is a little bit different from how Continental does it. So this is cylinder two and four over here and I think this is one and two or sorry, one and three over there. Um, let's just double check that. Yeah, that's right. And if you're trying to figure out how I could verify that, you can very faintly see a one stamped right there and a three stamped right there. This engine was overhauled a long time ago by this company, Matituck. It's um, very well known. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but very well known company did this overhaul many, many, many years ago and the engine is running well. We put new baffling on this aircraft back in 23 when I bought it, when we did the initial big overhaul. I've put new engine isolation mounts or vibration dampening mounts on this, on this airplane about a year ago, so those are brand new. Um, and what we're doing right now is just taking a final look before I cowl it all up and get it ready for its first run and leak check. Of course, up front, we've got the three-bladed Hartzell propeller. That doesn't sling oil like the Macaulay's. It's not the same style, so we won't have that problem there. Oil filter is on this side. 
Actually, this is pretty good to know. So usually the cowling's here, and I'm gonna take you through the path of where wind or air would flow. Air will flow through here, up over the cylinders, and then because it gets blocked by the baffling, high pressure builds up right here, and air wants to move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Since there is no air flowing under the engine, air will naturally force itself down over these fins. The rest of that air is gonna get forced through this hole that you see right there. That hole flows into this scat tubing, which flows into this box, which is the air cleaner box. There's an air filter that's inside this box. And then from that box, there is another scat line right here that then puts that clean air from the filter into the throttle body, which you probably can't see, but it's, you know, I follow this thick uh, orange line to this unit right here. And then the throttle does its thing. You mix it with fuel, you dump it into the engine, fuel, spark, compression, exhaust, that kind of stuff happens, right? That makes sense, right? We don't have the problem of carb icing on this airplane because it doesn't have a carburetor. Again, if you're doing flight training, you're probably flying in an older airplane, or I, maybe I can't say probably, you could be flying in an old airplane that has a carburetor. This one is injected, so you don't ice up the carb. You don't have that venturi effect happening in the carburetor that makes it susceptible to carburetor icing. So icing is not necessarily an engine problem on this particular airframe. The air actually flows over these cylinders that heats it up naturally a little bit anyway. Um, the bigger problem is airframe icing, getting ice on your wing, which we're not gonna do, especially in an airplane that's not certified for flight through known icing. Just remember that, we're being smart, we're being safe in 2025. The vacuum pump is right here. It's right on the top of the aircraft engine. Um, there is a line that runs into the airplane here that then gets filtered and spit into the directional gyro, or in some cases, the attitude indicator. We don't have an attitude indicator in this airplane anymore that uses vacuum pressure. We have an electric attitude indicator. But then it, it completes a, a loop in there, it goes into a vacuum gauge, it comes back out, and it gets filtered. Um, but this directional gyro, or sorry, this vacuum pump is sucking that air in, it swirls it around in there with some, some fans, some vanes, and then it spits it out this little exhaust side right here. We're just spitting out filtered air right there. Right, we got one magneto here. It's a slick style magneto. So, if I wanted to go ahead and put a Surefly magneto onto this airplane, it should be a little bit easier because the harnesses will bolt directly up to a Surefly. If you have a Bendix, style magneto, you've got to change the harness over to a slick style when you put in a shore fly. These harnesses are a little bit older, so I'd probably spring the money, you know, spend the money and go for a new harness anyway. The magneto, the right magneto, is hidden right beneath here, right down here. You're right next to the vacuum pump. It's right down there, right? Let's see what other cool things I can show you. Of course, the oil filter is right there, easy to access. We have safety wired it out of the out of the way. Done a nice job on the safety wire. Uh, what other cool things can I show you? I painted these rocker covers red, just you know, just to be cool. And this is where I'll take a, a uh, dry erase marker while we're working on the airplane and scribble the compression values for the airplane. This cylinder has really nice compression, 77 out of 80. That's a really strong, nice cylinder. Most of them are in the mid 70s, so that's pretty good. Front of the engine, what other cool things? Oh, this is the alternator belt right here, just behind the flywheel. These teeth are what mesh up with the starter to start the engine, just like in a car. It doesn't have a starter adapter like the Continental design. This is a much simpler, much better design. But right behind it, there's another massive pulley that's, uh, that the alternator belt sits on. Let's see if we can see it from this side. Yeah, there you go. This is running down right here to spin the alternator. And the starter, you might not be able to see it, but there's a little cutout for the starter right here. 
the start of Bendix is right behind there. So that thing spits, that sticks out its teeth mesh with the teeth on this flywheel, spins the prop, the engine starts with those two magnetos that we looked at and after fuel gets injected into the engine. So you see how that all comes together? Oh, you also have to suck the air in like we talked about right there. So that's how this engine works. It's got a lot of hours on it. This engine has maybe 1700 or 1800 hours on it, but compressions are great. It's not making metal. It's not making any metal in the suction, in the oil filters or the screens. Um, it runs really smooth. We're gonna be able to test its temperatures because I'm running new EGT and CHT probes on this engine. We're gonna be able to take a look at all that stuff and see how the engine's doing just to monitor its health as it gets up there in age, like the rest of us. We get tired, engines get tired, but this thing will give us a lot of signs before you know, anything catastrophic goes wrong. You could still have a fluke occurrence that, you know, does something silly and the engine creates trouble sooner rather than later. But for right now, we are in pretty good shape with this engine. I'm pretty happy with where it's at. I wouldn't let my friends fly this airplane or I wouldn't fly this airplane if I thought we had issues with this engine or this prop or this airframe. It just wouldn't happen. We'd ground the airplane because we want to be ultra conservative and super safe. So yeah, there's a tour of the Lycoming IO 360 C1C. Oh, again, I think I said this initially, but I for injected, so it's fuel injected. O for um, horizontally opposed. So the engines are laying out in a horizontal manner. So you can see they're kind of flat. So uh, like a boxer engine, it's flat and they're opposed. So they're side by side, one on this side, one on that side, one, you know, you get it and a 360 for 360 cubic inches of displacement. So these cylinders are pretty big um, and put out a ton of displacement for an engine this size. It makes about 200 horsepower. So hopefully you learn something about engines. Um, I'm gonna pick a different system a different time and walk you through that. But I just had a little bit of time right now just waiting for a couple people and figured I would just show you what an engine looks like and what decent baffling looks like an older engine but we've spruced it up we painted some areas to make it look really nice uh, make it cleaner and easier to work on so yeah that's what uh, that's what we're working with leave a comment if you uh, want to know anything specifically about this particular engine or some other airplane engine I don't know too much about road taxes but I can try to find the answer and as always stay curious be good to yourself where's your pet where's your dog Actually, have you seen your cat lately? That's a great question. And we'll see you again next time. Oh, wait a minute before I let you go. You can't really see it because it's a little bit dark under here, but that's an exhaust stack right there from one of the cylinders. And they all get together in a collector, a muffler, a little collector, and then spit out the bottom of the cowling right here. So each one of these represents a different bank of cylinders, maybe the left or the right side. And your exhaust, is spitting out right there, which is why the belly of the airplane right back there gets super dirty because soot and sometimes unburnt fuel, because these things aren't electronically controlled, you're controlling it with a mixture valve. Stuff spits out there, ends up on the body, the belly of the airplane, you've got to clean it up. So, yeah, so now we've talked about air, we've talked about fuel, we've talked about exhaust, we talked about the magnetos, you know, we looked at the leads coming up to these spark plugs. Yeah, there you go. You know, two spark plugs per cylinder, one on the top, one on the bottom. So you got eight spark plugs on this airplane um, for redundancy. And that's pretty much it. All right, now we'll catch you later. I think I've seen everything.